All right, folks, welcome to this week's Tip Tuesday. Uh, Larry came in to shoot an axis deer, and he got a heck of a nice axis deer. We'll show you pictures of that later, but uh, I'm just going to show you, for this week's Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to cape an axis deer. Cape any animal, quite honestly, for a shoulder mount. Um, if I have the opportunity, I'll use a cradle. If not, I've done countless of these on the ground. Uh, we won't go through the whole process, but I start back here on the back legs. Yes, I know it's a shoulder mount, but we're going to skin the whole animal. So, again, having a nice sharp knife makes nice clean cuts, makes it easy for the taxidermist to go back and sew up. And I'm doing everything on the inside. And you can see right here that my knife blade is is on the inside so I'm not cutting hair I'm cutting skin and this would be fine for uh, a life size depending on how it was posed you do the same cuts but same deal on the legs we're gonna cut on the inside and as long as I'm cutting on the inside they can they can sew it up and it'll all be hidden but when you get down here to the armpit, you're going to go straight back to where I cut up into the, by the sternum. So, just like that. We're going to do the same thing on this other leg. Again, as long as I'm cutting on the inside, making nice straight cuts and cutting the skin and not hair, taxidermist sews it up, it won't be any big deal. And go right to that, and that's it. You'll peel all this, you'll cape him, peel this brisket flap or chest flap, and then you'll peel the legs, front and back, We'll skin down to the atlas joint and we'll cut his head off. I won't show you all that, but we'll, when I get down to the atlas joint, I'll show you that and I'll show you how I break his neck and get the head off and then that'll be good. But make your cuts nice and straight and cut from the inside, cut the skin, not the hair. Your taxidermist will thank you for that. So hope that helps. We'll be back in a second. Stay tuned. All right, one thing I wanted to show you is a lot of people struggle with, you know, how to keep the Achilles intact when you're hanging them up. Now, once I get the back legs skinned, we're gonna hang him up by the back legs, and that just helps us pull every pull the hide off of him. So, on this, you're wanting to cut this joint right here. You don't cut you don't cut at his knee. You cut at this joint right here. And when you do that, you'll keep the Achilles intact. So I've already skinned it. So you cut on the bottom and the top. You cut those, all that connective tissue. And then depending on how creative you want to get, if you can get it back on to this, okay, again, God put this together to work a certain direction. We're taking it apart, so we're using what he made against itself. So I'm just using this little thing as a fulcrum. Don't have to put much pressure. And then you break that back leg, that joint. But what it does, so now I got two things. One, I have a handle to help skin and I have a I have the Achilles intact so when I hang it from the gambrel we can hang him up in the air and then now I got a handle to pull on roll the hide up in this and then pull down so keep that in mind when you're doing this doesn't take a lot of force cut in the right place bend against what God made his leg wasn't made to move side to side it was made to move back and forth so we just cut what kept it moving forwards and backwards we cut that 
and then we moved it sideways. It broke, it was real easy. So stay tuned, we're not done yet. Close, but not done. Okay, so now I'm up to the front leg. The front leg's much easier than the back, although the back, as you saw, is not very hard. So again, all we're doing is put, we're taking apart what God put together. God made it to move like this. So you, you see all those guys playing professional sports when someone hits them from the side and they gotta have their ACL, MCL fixed and they're never the same. That's all we're doing. So again, we're cutting around the edges, not using a lot of pressure. I know people use loppers and sawzalls and I'm not a fan of a bunch of bones and shrapnel in my meat. So I use a knife, I don't use a saw on anything. But you can see where I cut, right at his knee, because it was moving. And now I'm not using hardly any pressure and it just twists off. A lot of this stuff may be pretty easy for some of y'all or, or maybe it's pretty self-explanatory to some of y'all. Some may not have any idea, so I just wanted to show you. And again, now we've got another handle. So I'll show you when I get him up in the air and we start pulling on him, this is what we're using. So, getting closer. All right, again, I don't like saws, I don't like loppers, none of that kind of stuff. I'm just as fast with a knife. So we get to his tail. I've skinned to here, same deal. All you're doing is you're gonna find one of these joints in his tailbone. And typically I do it a lot faster than that, but evidently I have not found this, a joint. But when you find a joint, same deal, it goes right through it. And I was struggling a little bit, so all I did was kind of break his, break that joint. And again, you cut through it, now you got another handle. And on these fat deer, this deer just came out of velvet. On these fat deer, it helps to have a handle. So we're gonna keep going, we're getting closer. So when I say you've got a handle, again, and there's multiple ways to do this. This is just mine. So you get it like that, and then it gives you something to pull on. These big fat deer are hard, and I'm tired and a little weak, but you get the idea. But it just gives you something to pull with. If there's somebody on that side, it helps, but you get the idea. And once you get this side caught up, it'll come. But you're just rolling it up. It's way easier to hang on to this than it is the skin. So, we've almost got his clothes off. Stay tuned. Okay, we've got him cape or skin all the way down to the atlas joint or occipital joint, whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically where the spine and the, and the head meet. So, you skin all the way down to where you can see his chin. So that's his chin bone right there. You see how it's kind of rounded? That's his chin bone. It's way easier to go from the chin than it is from the back. That's why all of our, our buddies, our Muslim buddies over in, overseas that old Uncle Joe left all the weapons to, that's the reason that when they're making those videos of the poor guys in the orange jumpsuits, they're doing it from this way because it's easier to cut from here than it is from here. So if you have that opportunity, you can cut right here. Once you cut, And you're just cutting right above, right above the jaw, jaw bone. But it doesn't go straight back, it angles, because it goes from here to here. That's the base of your spine. So it goes from your jawline to the base of your spine. And again, you can use a sawzall, you can use loppers. Again, I'm not a fan of that. I use one knife. To do all my work. And again, this is just my personal preference. If you want to use a sawzall, if you want to use loppers, whatever. But once you get back here, you see where his head's moving, and again, you're just taking apart what God put together. So his head moves like that, well, the atlas joint's got to be right in there. 
So shove your knife right in there. And just let the tip of your knife feel where the joint is. And if you're in the wrong place, just move until you get to the right place. And if you don't like that, then go from here. Because again, you can go from the chin side. All this is cut. I missed the atlas joint again. But you can see I'm close. And now I'm right in there. But see, there's, there's bones that they fit like this around the spine. So you gotta get your knife up in there. So now I'm in there. So now I've cut that. See how this cut right there? And now, once I stick it in here, see how that all freed up all of a sudden? Now I'm in the right spot. Again, I'm not using a whole lot of pressure, but I've got a good knife. This is a Ruben Ramos knife, rknives.com. I'm using one knife, and this knife has been through, I don't know, since I've sharpened it, six, eight years. And all I'm doing is cutting that atlas joint, cutting all the connective tissue, same deal. On this side, he's got a he's got a wing, but because he's already cut and he's sliding out, that's it. So now I've cut everything, and just like that, we're done. So hopefully that shows you how to cave. I did it on a cradle because it gets it waist high. And I don't have to bend over. I've had two back surgeries, so it makes it easier and I don't have to bend over. But same principle on the ground, back of your truck, whatever. And I left the legs on because, because I use them as handles. If you're not doing a full body mount, then you cut them off and throw them away. And if you got a mangy old mutt like I do, he comes and cleans up the scrap. So it's good for everybody. But anyhow, I hope that helped. If y'all have any questions or if I can help with anything, let me know. Take care. Adios.